Hello, my soccer universe. Time, 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 time. That's the problem that I have uh, with making the videos and sometimes you gotta prioritize. And I could have made a video a one week after I made the previous one for the Eredivisie and the Netherlands because there were quite some interesting results. But then I said, okay, now let's wait after the big, the topper. Although then it's only a week until we have the next one, we have the World Cup break coming. Yeah, however I do it, it's not right and I probably have to rethink my scheduling in general to not wait for big games or, you know, see how it goes. And, you know, there was also a trip in between. So, no more excuses. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm doing the last video. I almost made a priority, but I thought that Italy, I can get uh, in quicker because it's only one league I need to do calculations for. Now I'm using my lunch break because I'm a busy guy to do this video. Um... Obviously, and I usually don't do it that the thumbnail and the jersey I wear coincide, but uh, PSV winning at Ajax is a mega result. And yes, I'm more Ajax leaning. However, I have a feeling that this PSV side is something special. They have beaten Arsenal. Not many can say this. They have beaten Arsenal. Uh, yes, in the Europa League, Arsenal probably didn't play first team squad. Um, they are a side that can score many many goals can be very excited but can also be very frustrating and within these last three weeks we actually saw that because PSV lost they have actually uh while they are not top of the table we'll see uh this comes with a caveat there they have lost in between and they need to always make up ground so um Ruud van Nistel Roy uh makes is a very attacking side it's a very a uh, fun side to watch, but on the flip side, I think defensively they're not quite sound. They're always up for a little bit of a combustion. Uh, but what makes it more positive that I could see them maybe getting a title is because I think Ajax are also a little bit taking a step back. They had lost so many great players and Coach Röda, I think I'm not quite convinced yet. So uh, it's interesting times. Is it time for change in the Netherlands? We gotta see. I will actually talk the Netherlands second. Um, first in France. Overall storylines. I mean, PSG keep winning without being convincing. Uh, if they click up front, the Neymars, the Messi's, and the Mbappes, it's a sight to behold. They can really be great. However, again, defensive frailty. Now they have to play Bayern Munich. This will be the. This will be a really big test for them if they have to, in the Champions League. But we have so much time up until then. Um, we had the start of Laurent Blanc already, which was semi-successful. They now lost uh, to OM, but other than that, it was so far successful. We had a few entertaining games in there. Um, the problem is that it's more or less a league where you should take PSG out if you, like, see who is going to go second. It's a really, really exciting race in league uh, at the moment, and Lyon is not out of it, but I, I think there are other teams that have to be favored more like a loss that is now second place Lorient coming a little bit apart but that was always gonna happen Ren still very hard to beat uh they are almost unstoppable in a, in, in in a sense but they're also not racking up the win so there are good teams in there it's just none is as consistent as PSG are in PSG uh, sometimes you have the feeling they're winning in second gear or in spite of themselves because they have the big three up there and if you don't have a very good structure uh, to play against them they're gonna win relatively easy and we're gonna start with PSG at Ajax so where this exactly happened it was a Friday evening game and while Ajax so tried to play with them it was the totally the Messi and Mbappe show. Uh, Messi scoring one, assisting two, and Mbappe scoring the other, uh, assisted by, uh, you know, either Mbappe assists Messi or Messi assists Mbappe. And all this talk about, you know, Pivot Gate and uh, Mbappe not happy being there. If you get those nice assists from Messi, you gotta be happy. And Messi is, again, he's, he is in a really, really good shape. I continue saying that. It's just that he's not scoring goals like crazy, but however, he's assisting. He has a slightly different role. And if you can play with uh, players of the ilk of Mbappe and Neymar, offensive is always good. This problem is always how solid are they defensively. And I think this is something that PSG still have not quite uh, solved yet. But against Ajax, so worked out well. Laurent Blanc also gets a 2-1 win uh, over uh, uh, Montpellier. I think this was his first game in charge. Um, 
Again, Lyon, also a team that actually flatters to deceive a little bit more because I think you would uh, expect more. It's also, also a game with two red cards, many red cards in France uh, in general this season already. Uh, and then the other big result was that Lens went to Marseille and beat them through a late Costa goal. Um, and that was kind of the first real bump that Marseille hit. And ever since Marseille don't look quite right, which was also exemplified what we saw from them in the Champions League, where they threw away a pretty good position, uh, not only in the group before, but also then, uh, you know, you had the draw against Spurs that would have seen you through to the next, next round and you just try to attack. I don't fault them for that, but um, you, you're completely out of here. But maybe it's a blessing in disguise. Uh, as it ran against Angers, a, a, a big one. Then Lorient only 2-2 against Troyes. There you already saw that Lorient has come coming apart. And then out of nowhere, the little Monaco game. And I this is for once I did not. I usually have the Sunday uh, League 1 game on, on a side screen. Uh, there were other games on there, so I didn't watch that one and I totally regret it because a seven goal game and it was a really, really good and interesting one. The first half ended 2-2 with Lille twice taking the lead, but then uh, Ben Yedda gives Monaco the lead and Lille have to come to Quebec, uh, Cabella and uh, Bamba. Uh, turned turn around, so a really, really interesting game that I unfortunately didn't see too much from. Then uh, the weekend after, Move. We had Lance continuing their good run with a 3 0 over uh, Toulouse. Uh, also, another crazy seven goal game that I again didn't see live uh, was uh, between PSG and Troyes, where Troyes twice took the lead through uh, Balde. I think uh, he, if I can, uh, remember cor uh, cor correctly, uh, Senegalese defender. And the equalizer, the first one was given by Carlos Soler, and then it need Messi and Neymar and uh, Mbappe, who uh, each scored a goal, Mbappe with a penalty. He was the one that actually did not work that well. And the one thing is Mbappe missed a chance where probably the best assist that you will see all season from Neymar, how we on the rotation with his soul he is touch a straight uh you know caressing the ball into mbappe's path you need to score there because that would have been the goal of the season this was this was why you have those three up there because they combine so well if they want um and credit to neymar it's seemingly a world cup come come coming up and all the criticism of the season he looks in really really good shape he just has to stop his stuff uh, both Messi and Neymar really lo lo looking good. However, you know, there's a f it ended 4-3. So this, this three on the back is what uh, should have everyone concerned because Costa is not a world-beating team. A uh, crazy game also in Strasbourg where Marseille had a 2 nil halftime lead through Dieng and Cabaret. And uh, yes, they had chances to increase the lead, but uh, probably the, uh, Strasbourg was also in there. They get through Motiba and equalize, and then Kevin Gamera from far out hits it so sweetly. And in stoppage time, it is a 2 2. A uh, little bit respite for Strasbourg, who are having actually a really rough season after just missing out on Europe last season around um again i hit the big ones ran three nil over montpellier lorient losing at home to nice so you already saw lorient also having a homestand kind of going down and then lyon get a rare win over lille and you thought maybe they have turned the corner like i said getting the winning goal lille not being the top team that they were two seasons ago but you know a decent team uh this time around but their rivals loss are doing a teeny bit better then on the past weekend, we got, uh, yeah, the, again, uh, Lorient against PSG. I mean, two, three weeks ago, this would have been 2v1. PSG controlled that one, uh, but a big mistake by Mvogo, a Swiss uh, reserve goalkeeper, uh, handed that one and he even had to cock off because he injured himself, pro World Cup out as well. Uh, PSG missing a few chances and without playing Messi. I think Messi is already preparing for the World Cup, whereas Neymar is still playing. However, Lorient come back and scored equalizer through Mofi, who then even hits the crossbar. But late on, uh, Danilo Pereira gets the winning goal after another Neymar assist. Hard work, not looking good, but getting the job done. Um, we had then Nice against Brest, 1-0. Uh, that sticks out a uh, not 
come up from Europe also losing to Reims, Monaco winning at Toulouse. And then another good clash between Lille and uh, Stade Rennes. Lille having the lead through Font. Uh, Burigo can equalize a late red card in there. Um, but, you know, again, Rennes not picking up enough points. And similarly, Lille uh, just too many points lost. And then uh, the good vibes for Lyon uh, are done because Gigo scores a winner for Marseille. Mar a Marseille team that probably also needed the points because, you know, what happened in Europe uh, probably was a really, really uh, a big downer for them. So in the table, with all the results going more or less their way and picking up uh, three wins in a row, PSG have now a very clear five-point lead. And it's, it's one is really hard-pressed to see someone stepping up. Their loss also having a little bit of cushion on Ren, meaning I need a loss shirt uh, sooner, more, so sooner later. And then it gets tied. We have Ren, Marseille, Monaco, and Lorient uh, in there. And Lille, I think, has a chance to, uh, to get up there, there as well. Not so sure with Lyon, honestly. Uh, on the bottom, uh, it is still very much the chances, very much conditioned by um, that the promoter teams they don't have that high ratings yet. But uh, Strasbourg, who was really good last season, seems suddenly in trouble. They have only one win so far. Brest, who escaped uh, two seasons in, 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 in a row, also um, struggling. Angers have been up there. With four relegated teams, this could be a real, real dogfight bit because nothing's really decided yet. I would argue uh, at least Reims from 11 down, everyone is still in trouble. I mean, one could even say Clermont should be considered in there. Uh, if it comes to the expected, it's Ajaxo, Brest, Auxerre and Angers uh, at the moment going down. Again, uh, we are only uh, shortly uh, after 40% of the season being played. So um, we got to see up top uh, last now finishing the Champions League spots uh, have Marseille moving in the Ren going out. But I think this will be really, really close and Monaco will have a word to say as well. Uh, the last round, I will talk about that, uh, finishes with a big one between Monaco and Marseille. Uh, other, other than that, I mean, Lyon against Nice could be an interesting one as well. Going over to the Netherlands, um, the stunner was that on the weekend, uh, second to last weekend in October, we had uh, both of the challengers to Ajax, Feyenoord and PSV losing uh, lo losing points. Feyenoord only managing a 1-1 uh, to Sita, chasing the game for a long time. Uh, Ajax winning easily at Walwijk and then Groningen beating uh, PSV, having a 3-0 lead going into stoppage time that Sangare cuts just short. I mean, a 45 plus 1, a 45 plus 2 to go uh, to make it 3-1. Who's still gets PSV into the game, but then a stoppage time goal makes it 4 to for Groningen. And at that point, you really thought, yeah, uh, PSV is not quite ready and they will probably need this win against Ajax. Uh, Ajax and Feyenoord, because of the European commitments, did not play uh, on the past, uh, on the weekend before. They will not play in the midweek, uh, actually tomorrow and the day after. Um, but PSV got a 3-0 win over um, uh, NEC. And then the past weekend, I mean, there's really not much, much I can say, except that uh, AZ is also a little bit on downturn, losing 3 1 to Wallbike, Feyenoord, get, 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 getting a win, Utrecht having a good time. Um, but it all boils down to Ajax against PSV, which was a very touchy affair. Uh, the teams very closely matched PSV, trying to match uh, Ajax with physicality. Having a good game plan um, and uh, hitting early when Kakpo is assisting Luc de Jong, uh, who is just escaping the, 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 the defender. It was a really typical Luc de Jong goal. The game, though, was not a good it was very It was very tentative or uh, very physically. There was a lot of uh, bust ups here, here and there. Ajax did hit the post once, but it had a lot of room to grow. And at the moment you thought it could grow, Ajax came, came out, they hit and Gutierrez makes it 2-0. Uh, and there was a penalty shout uh, that was not given, although I thought it may be, because uh, I think even when the ball was played, it was kind of a weird tacky. So PSV actually seems, seems to make a throw until uh, Luca very late on pulls one back and Ajax and trying to press forward. 
but PSV get the win, uh, moving them temporarily above Ajax. As I said, I could see this being a turning point um, already, but let's wait after the World Cup and how the seasons develop. But I think Ajax is vulnerable at this moment. Ajax have been dominant, but at this moment Ajax to me seem quite vulnerable. And so in the table we see that in the current standings PSV are up top. However, they have a game less, so we need to as always look also at the expected standing uh, at the adjusted standings where Ajax still barely hold the advantage over PSV, but it is still there. Ferro is in a relatively safe third spot, um, and then Twente and AZ. AZ have been up there with the top three, but they have been falling away over the past few few weeks. Also, Europe, the performance were so and so, uh, and Twente kind of keeping and confirming their good last season. Utrecht also have been moving up there. So if you see a spot of Rotterdam, who have been actually uh, relegation threatened, could well finish in the European playoffs. So yeah. The model still says Ajax up top, but now it's much, much closer with PSV and Feyenoord uh, being close by. And, you know, we have the big games. Uh, most of the big games still come coming, but I would say PSV is probably the biggest uh, favorite. We have the makeup games for Ajax and Feyenoord coming. Ajax having to play with Vitesse, a Vitesse team that used to be up there, but now is more or less mid to lower uh, to bottom end of the table. And then uh, just before the, for the World Cup, we get another pretty good one. Uh, PSV at Z, but at Z is not as good as they used to be. So we got to see if also finish out with a Rotterdam Dar between Feyenoord and Excelsior. So uh, interesting. Ajax have to play at Emmen, which is a game they should, should win. So that's it from me, from those two leagues that are kind of just a tad below the other leagues that I'm usually uh, watch. But I, when, when there's a big game, I'm usually very much interested. I always say something like that at the end of this. In any case, please, if you watch these leagues more regularly, please drop a line below what you think is happening there. Because I am also in, in interested to get a little bit more insight. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!